as said earlier, uh, we will be talking about uh, negative temperature and see that how it arises in a system uh, at least in the transient phase of the system. Um, and uh, as an example of uh, the canonical ensemble, we will do uh, ideal gas and also we will do all these other systems such as Einstein model of solids in which he tried to explain the specificate of solids especially at low temperature. Uh, in this context, uh, we will see that that these uh, the model of solid is nothing but uh, a collection of oscillators, um, quantum oscillators and um, uh, how this gives rise to a specific heat in the canonical ensemble. And uh, then we will uh, do a spin J system, uh, we have done a spin half system uh, that is paramagnetism of a spin J system, there is a, uh, a Brillouin function comes and that uh, in the limit of large temperature gives rise to the Curie susceptibility and uh, we will also do equipartition theorem. So, uh, let us uh, start looking at uh, negative temperature. So, the thermodynamic definition of temperature is, uh, so this is a thermodynamic definition is nothing but T equal to del S del E inverse uh, at uh, constant N and V and uh, 1 over T equal to del S del E, uh, so uh, at constant N and V. So, uh, there is no guarantee that uh, S of E, S as a function of E, that is the entropy as a function of energy is uh, a monotonic function of E. In fact, uh, uh, no law of thermodynamics uh, is violated if e, S is not a, a monotonic function of E. Now, suppose S is a fu monotonic function of E, monotonic means that it sort of you know uh, varies in this fashion. So, S versus E is like this and the slope is always positive. In that case, temperature is always positive, but there are uh, instances or there are examples in which uh, S is not a monotonic function of uh, E. And for that, uh, to show that, let us consider that uh, we have uh, there is an example and uh, there are n non-interacting spin half particles in a magnetic field. Okay? And uh, uh, suppose uh, in this situation uh, to begin with the initial condition is that or initial scenario is that all the spins are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And uh, in which case the number of microstates is just one that is all of them are pointing in the direction of the field. So, they are pointing say for example, up direction assuming that the magnetic field is in the upward direction. Uh, so this gives the log of omega which is log of 1 which is equal to 0 and uh, that tells us that the entropy of the system is 0 and it is easy to understand that all the spins are pointing up uh, and uh, there is no disorder in the system. So, uh, it is just in a very ordered state and this should give us the entropy to be equal to 0. Now, uh, you change the magnetic field and how you can change the magnetic field? Uh, Let us consider a solenoid. Uh, so, this solenoid is just a you know a, a cylinder or a tube uh, with uh, either it could have a core inside that is core of a magnetic material or it could have a simply vacuum inside. Um, you have a number of uh, windings of the wire which carries current and say the current is being carried from left to right then the magnetic uh, field that is generated inside the solenoid assuming that it is large and we neglect the edge effects. Uh, then this is given by mu 0 n into i where mu 0 is the permeability of the medium inside. Um, capital N is the number of turns okay, and i is the current that flows. And now what you can do is that you can change the uh, direction of the current from left to right to right to left and in which case you will change the direction of the magnetic field uh, in this direction. Okay? So, that tells you that the magnetic field direction is not difficult to change and suppose at this moment just assume that you have kept this, uh, this spin half particles inside such an arrangement where you have a constant magnetic field and that can be um, reversed. Okay? Uh, so, what will happen is that all the spins cannot respond uh, immediately to the 
uh, changing uh, direction of the magnetic field. So, a few will turn um, towards the magnetic field and slowly everything will start uh, pointing towards the magnetic field again and if you wait for long enough, so, so change direction of the field and if you wait for long enough, then all the spins will now be pointing down assuming that it was initially pointing up along the direction the di field direction was up and uh, the spins were also pointing up and now the spins are pointing down uh, because the magnetic field is pointing down. So, again we uh, get a situation in which the number of microstates is equal to 1. So, S uh, let us call it as an initial and uh, let us call it just I and S F the final is again equal to 0 because all of them are now pointing in the same direction. Now, alternatively you can think about it that uh, in this uh, ordered system the initial ordered system when um, there is the, the all the spins are pointing along the direction of the field you pump an energy say mu 0 b ok. Then uh, one spin points uh, uh, flips ok. Uh, if you do it 2 mu 0 b 2 uh, spins will flip and if you apply an energy n mu 0 b then all the spins will flip. So, we are not talking about changing magnetic field, but we are just saying that you pump in energy uh, to the system and again uh, the system goes uh, from entropy equal to 0 uh, to entropy equal to 0 and in between it has a finite entropy. And if you want to know how the uh, plot looks like, then the plot looks like pretty much like this, uh, sorry about this uh, energy ok, same here ok. So, this is a energy axis and uh, this is the entropy. So, this is S uh, as a function of E uh, and this is E here. Now, you see that um, there are two regions let us call it A and B or it is uh, denoted by uh, blue and red. Uh, in this uh, blue region or the left half of the semicircle, uh, the temperature is positive because the entropy grows or entropy increases and energy increases. But however, so this is the initial position when all the spins were pointing uh, say in the upward direction. And uh, this final situation let us call them as uh, maybe um, O and O prime. Uh, so, at O all of them are pointing in the same uh, direction that is upward direction and you have these uh, energy to be uh, entropy to be equal to 0. Um, then you are pumping in uh, energy to the system mu b, 2 mu b, 3 mu b and so on the entropy rises and this is a situation this uh, quite strange because this situation would tell you that 1 by t which is equal to del s del e uh, which is equal to 0 because um, the slope it, it sort of saturates and the region becomes flat and if it is flat then uh, the definition tells you that 1 over t equal to 0 that uh, tells you that this is t equal to infinity and this t equal to infinity. Um, really is uh, uh, not infinite temperature, it just simply means that the number of uh, uh, up spins uh, is equal to number of down spin, down spins ok. And then uh, the right half of the semicircle sort of starts showing a decrease along the red line and uh, where the temperature is negative because the slope of this del s del e curve is equal to uh, 0. But you see one thing here the negative temperature region which is given by or rather denoted by B is hotter than the, uh, the region of positive temperature and this tells you that you know uh, so it is really a transient because uh, the heat or the energy will actually sort of go from 
uh, the higher uh, energy state to a lower energy state and this uh, negative temperature state uh, would cease to exist in an equilibrium scenario. But nevertheless, this is an um, example uh, where the statistically the, uh, the entropy uh, shows a negative uh, slope with respect to energy and you have a negative temperature arising in this region B. Now, uh, this is of course uh, an idealization or rather it is a uh, thing that is always possible to arise, uh, but whether um, is it really true or is, is it uh, possible to have this kind of state in experiments. So, let us ask this question that uh, how realistic it is. So, we have already said that uh, this is uh, this negative temperature region is hotter than the positive temperature region. So, let us call it as hotter and we know that uh, hotter body or the hotter region uh, in some parameter space there will be a change in energy or change or rather exchange of energy or exchange of heat to a less hot region and eventually it will come to an equilibrium. So, uh, one thing that can be told about how realistic it could be that we are only talking about the spin degrees of freedom okay, uh, where we have just uh, not considered anything else, but these are collection of spins. Now, that of course, is not a realistic situation. The spins have to be carried by someone say they have to be carried by the fermions or, or other things or even the bosons and so on. So, uh, not, not spin hub bosons are not spin hub, but let us talk about just fermions. So, uh, if we include other degrees of freedom uh, there is no guarantee that your uh, entropy would be a non monotonic function. So, if you look at this this looks like that it is a, a like a two state system I mean this is an important uh, understanding that we gather from here that uh, here the energy is equal to minus say mu uh, 0 b and this is say uh, plus mu 0 b and all that. So, energy is bounded between these two uh, values which are like minus mu 0 b and plus mu 0 b okay. or you can write this mu 0 is called as a Bohr magneton or the magnetic moment of the system. Okay. So, uh, but this is really for a bounded system or you can say that it is a two state system. So, this is negative temperature is only possible which we have made clear earlier also that uh, it uh, s uh, has to be a non monotonic function of energy and this is one of the examples that it can be a non monotonic function of energy. Okay. So, if you include other degrees of freedom, uh, uh, then uh, S of E um, may not have non monotonicity. I hope it is clear what I mean by non monotonicity it means that it sort of goes up and then comes down this is called non monotonic behavior a monotonic behavior is uh, just as we understand from the word that there is a uh, sort of boring increase in uh, one direction. Okay. So, here in this particular case s is only an increasing function of uh, energy. Now, uh, it is also uh, very important to realize that uh, when we talk about this how realistic it is that whether we can uh, operate an engine from uh, negative temperature to positive temperature. Okay. And uh, this will answer this question uh, that whether uh, if we can do it um, and get physically meaningful result 
then that means that uh, second law, etc., everything is valid and we have a physical situation. But it is not possible to operate an engine uh, from negative T to positive T. Let me tell you how. Uh, if you remember, the efficiency is given by 1 minus uh, Q2 by Q1. Uh, we have done this earlier, 1 minus T2 by T1. And just to remind you that Q1 is the uh, heat absorbed at temperature T1, uh, Q2 is the heat rejected uh, to a temperature say T2. Okay. In an usual scenario, T2 is greater than T1 okay. and that tells you that eta is uh, less than 1 which means the efficiency is less than 1 and this is what the statement of the second law is all about at least this Clausius statement and Clapper, uh, I mean um, other statements that have been put by uh, Cara Theodori and, and all that. Uh, so, this tells you that the maximum efficiency of an ideal engine has to be 1, but any realistic engine will have uh, Carnot engine will have a, um, an efficiency which is lesser than 1. But now, what happens is that if you have uh, uh, these uh, temperature to be uh, negative, so uh, then um, uh, this T2 is greater than T1. So, if uh, the T2 is greater than T1 um, and which tells you that uh, for negative temperature, so this is like a negative temperature scenario. What I mean by this is that the uh, from a hotter region to a cooler region you are trying to operate Carnot engine, uh, then eta becomes negative and can become very large. Okay. And uh, this and can be large also. Now, this has important implications that um, instead of work being produced by the engine, uh, you actually have to do supply work to the engine in order to keep it running. Okay? And um, in terms of the second law, this means that uh, it is possible to extract heat from a cooler body uh, to uh, and transfer it to hot uh, bodies. Okay? So, that is um, not possible by the statement of the second law. second law of thermodynamics. Now, as I said that even though it is not possible to have it realistically, but it is a transient uh, uh, in some kind of a non equilibrium situation, this is still possible to achieve um, and which is what uh, we have given this example of the spin system. Uh, one can achieve that. Okay. So, uh, now this negative temperature is, uh, let us just stop at that for the negative temperature and let us carry on with examples of canonical distribution. And we will do a number of uh, important examples. Uh, Let us start with uh, classical ideal gas. So, this is our favorite system anyway and uh, we know that uh, either the energy or the Hamiltonian is written as sum over i and p i square over 2 m. There are no other degrees of freedom, only kinetic degrees of freedom, which is half m v i square, which can be written as p i square over 2 m. We have taken that all the, uh, the masses of the particles are same, uh, but you can take this uh, to be m i and it does not matter. Okay. So, it is um, this is the energy of the system and if you have to calculate the partition function, then what we do is that we will um, integrate over all the 
positional coordinates which are like this and uh, we will have to uh, do the same for the momentum coordinates, uh, but um, this uh, will not be independent because we have a term in energy which is like this and there is a d q p n and this is exponential minus beta and uh, so this is like a p i square by 2 m. Uh, a little better way of writing could be that uh, each one of the terms we write it as uh, uh, d cube p 1. Uh, so, there is a sum here which we should write. So, which means exponential minus b uh, this is 1 beta p 1 square over 2 m uh, then this is q p 1 d q p 2 uh, e to the power minus beta p 2 square over 2 m and so on and then you have a d q p n and e to the power minus beta p n square over 2 m and so on. Okay. This uh, integral gives you simply a v to the power n, each one is v, so there are n terms, so it is v to the power n. This from all these integrals from minus infinity to plus infinity gives you a Gaussian integral and keep this in mind all the time because we need it very frequently in statistical mechanics. It is minus infinity to plus infinity dx is equal to root over pi pi alpha and at times we actually also would need um, from uh, 0 to infinity in which case we have a half factor coming in front of this. So, this uh, tells you that this is nothing but equal to it is a v to the power n and um, uh, so, here it is uh, alpha which is what we have said there. So, alpha is equal to root over 2 m by beta. Okay. So, uh, we have a root over pi as well. So, this is like a 2 pi m by beta and whole to the power um, half. Now, there are uh, you know uh, sort of all of these things. Uh, so, uh, all these uh, there are 3 n of them and um, or rather uh, let us say that there are n such terms. So, we write it as v to the power n 2 pi m by beta my uh, to the power um, n by 2. Okay. This actually is um, should be written as a little more carefully one should do it because uh, you, this is a one dimensional integral that I have done. So, this is like a d p e to the power minus beta p square over 2 m is simply equal to 2 pi m by beta to the power half. Uh, now, if you do it for d p x, d p y and d p z, you will get each of these factor as um, uh, half and then it becomes 3 by 2 and since we are doing it in 3 dimension, we are getting a 3 n by 2 here. Uh, you can also do it like this uh, 4 pi p square and uh, e to the power minus beta p square over 2 m uh, 0 to infinity d p this will also give you the same result. Uh, is just that uh, if you need to know what this thing is uh, then what you do is that uh, you uh, take a, a d 2 d alpha 2 uh, of this expression or this integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus alpha x square d x. So, it is a d 2 d alpha 2 um, root over of pi by alpha and then do not forget to um, replace a half there because we for 0 to infinity we have it. Uh, uh, so, this is actually from 0 to infinity um, I mean minus infinity to plus infinity will be this and if you want a half of that which is 0 to infinity you just uh, multiply it by half. So, the partition function for a classical ideal gas uh, is given by v to the power n and 2 pi m by beta. Uh, whole to the power 3 n by 2. So, for n particles. Now, what is it good at? Uh, a, you can get uh, simply equal to minus k t log z uh, that is the Helmholtz free energy and uh, that can be processed here 
and we can write this down as v to the power n and we have a 2 pi uh, m over beta whole to the power 3 n by 2. Uh, now, there are two terms. Uh, so, log of say for example, a and log of this is a b. So, we can write this as minus k t uh, log of. Uh, so, this uh, n will go up I mean will come in the front and we have a v and then uh, we have a 3 n by 2 uh, log of uh, 2 pi m by beta and so on and so forth. Now, this part is not important at this moment because we want to get the pressure. So, and we can if we want to get the pressure term, which means that we want to derive the equation of state. And so, this is equal to minus del f del v um, you know with um, n and t to be constant and this is nothing but minus um, um, n k t uh, log of v uh, you take a derivative with respect to v that will give you this uh, 1 over v. Now, there is a minus sign here and then there is another minus sign here. So, it will become plus and so, we recover the very well known uh, ideal equation of uh, state or uh, rather equation of state for ideal gases and uh, which is P v equal to n k t. Okay. So, uh, starting with particles which only have kinetic energy writing down the, the total energy of the system uh, calculating the canonical partition function uh, we uh, get uh, at a given temperature we recover the equation of state. So, let us uh, do the next example to be uh, equal to say for example, the one dimensional oscillators. Let us call it as an Einstein solid and I will tell you what uh, is Einstein solid. But before that, uh, let me just do the classical oscillator without uh, attaching too much of importance here, but it could be important in some other situation not in the present one. So, uh, the energy of an oscillator uh, which we can write, uh, uh, we can also write as a Hamiltonian. So, uh, if we write this p to be uh, and x to be as uh, operators. So, it is uh, half m omega square x square. Okay. So, uh, if we want to know the partition function, so we have to uh, it is like a minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus beta um, m omega square x square by 2 um, dx and um, minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus beta p square by 2 m. Um, into uh, dp, I am doing it in 1 d, okay. so, uh, but it can be trivially uh, extended to two uh, higher dimensions. So, each one of them is uh, this Gaussian integral and we can do this perform this integral and so on. So, this for one particle in one dimension, so let me write it as z 1. So, this is equal to uh, root over uh, pi by alpha, where alpha is equal to uh, 2 uh, divided by uh, beta uh, m uh, omega square. Uh, so, this is equal to root over uh, beta m pi omega square divided by 2. I hope I have not made a mistake here, but you use this uh, relation uh, that we have. So, this is uh, the, the Gaussian integral that we have talked about and this is anyway uh, root over uh, 2 pi m by beta and uh, then we can multiply. So, z 1 becomes equal to root over uh, beta m pi omega square by 2 into. Uh, so, uh, when you do the integral it will be 2 divided by beta uh, m omega square and that is what we have written pi over alpha is root over 2 uh, by beta m omega square. You can see this and um, convince yourself that if there is uh, there is anything uh, wrong that has been done here and then you just multiply it by 2 pi m by 
beta and so on. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, just check this thing. Okay. All right. We will do um, a quantum oscillators for Einstein solid. And what do we mean by quantum oscillator? Now, there is something subtle here. Uh, we are applying a classical statistics or the ensembles um, to a quantum mechanical problem. We just simply take the result of the quantum mechanical problem. So, in a way it is still doing classical statistical mechanics, but on an energy spectrum which comes from quantum mechanics. And this is given by E equal to n plus half uh, h cross omega, where omega equal to uh, k by m root over k by m, where k is the uh, force constant or the spring constant and m is the mass. So, the model is like this that I am just drawing it in one dimension, but you can uh, generalize it to two dimension, uh, two or three dimension and so on. So, uh, these are the atoms and ions and uh, they are connected by springs. So, these are capable of vibrating about their mean positions and the vibration can have all degrees of freedom that is the longitudinal and transverse degrees of freedom. If you solve the Schrodinger equation corresponding to a Hamiltonian which looks like a minus h square by 2 m uh, d 2 d x 2 uh, plus half uh, m omega square x square, it is like a parabolic potential. So, the potential that one has is like this. So, this is the V of x um, uh, versus x. So, this is this term. So, this uh, particle is actually confined in this parabolic uh, well, uh, which means that they have only harmonic degrees of freedom. And there is a model for a solid and that is what he uh, visioned it that it could explain uh, this specific heat of solids. And um, he was nearly correct excepting that he made a mistake which we will uh, talk about later that uh, this uh, vibration about these atoms or ions about the mean position will correctly give rise to the lattice specific heat or which is called as phonons because these excitations of these uh, atoms or ions about the mean positions are called phonons. And so, one has uh, really you know a potential like this. So, if you expand the potential about the mean position, uh, you get a x square kind of behavior and um, uh, this is very successful in sort of describing a solid. Uh, however, it cannot, it has also demerits, it cannot explain uh, the melting of solids, which means that in this harmonic approximation, this is called as a harmonic term. So, it is a harmonic potential and uh, within this approximation, you cannot uh, explain uh, the uh, melting of solids, which requires your uh, average value of x, which is equal to 0 uh, within these uh, these the wave functions. Uh, however, uh, I mean uh, that should not be 0. In fact, that should diverge as the solid starts melting. So, the harmonic approximation is good for some thing, but it is not uh, good for some other things, uh, which we accept uh, anyway in physics at various uh, you know places. Now, uh, uh, these are the energy spectrum. We do not need anything more at this moment, but uh, just uh, it is good to know that uh, the wave function uh, for this quantum harmonic oscillator in one dimension is some constant um, and uh, it is uh, multiplied by uh, uh, sort of polynomial uh, and there is a Gaussian of this form. Okay? I am writing it without normalizing it, without uh, uh, any other prefactor, but it is uh, these are the essential elements which uh, tells you that this polynomial has a certain property uh, that is when n is even polynomial that is even in x that is if you change x to minus x it does not change sign um, and this is the Gaussian that you are familiar with now. So, uh, this h n of x has a property that it is even for even n and not for odd n, which means for odd n, if you change x, it will change sign. Anyway, uh, this part we do not need, uh, just it is good to know. So, we calculate the partition function for this quantum harmonic oscillator 
this also has an important uh, implication this n, n can actually take values 0, 1, 2 and so on. Okay? So, 0 is a possibility um, and the 0 uh, gives you a 0 point energy which is equal to half h cross omega. So, even at absolute 0, there is some uh, 0 energy that is possible and uh, we uh, now want to calculate the, uh, the partition function, canonical partition function. So, let us just write it as there are n oscillators. So, n uh, quantum harmonic oscillators that is the system that we have that is at each lattice location there is an atom or ion which behaves like a quantum harmonic oscillators. So, this is equal to sum over j from 1 to n and we have n j plus half uh, h cross omega. Let me write it a little cleanly so that uh, later you can uh, take it. So, we have uh, let me write it here n uh, non interacting quantum harmonic oscillator. oscillators. Okay. So, these are uh, the energy of that and we need to calculate the canonical partition function which is nothing but equal to uh, now this uh, n j uh, and uh, there is an exponential minus beta e and this e is a function of n j we will just write it as that you see and n j can take values sorry this is uh, I mean a uh, this j will take values from 1 to n, but n takes values from 0 to infinity, okay? anything it can take. So, this is the, the quantity or rather this expression that we have to calculate in closed form and that is not uh, difficult to do it. It is easy to see that uh, this canonical partition function is of the form uh, there is this n j. Uh, exponential minus beta uh, sum over j equal to 1 to n uh, n j plus half uh, h cross omega. All right, so uh, there is a double sum that you see um, this j goes from 1 to n, n goes from 0 to infinity and um, so the double sum again factorizes nicely and we can see this that it is equal to for each j that is uh, j from 1 to n uh, this gives you the same result. So, we will uh, just take a uh, to raise to the power n. So, this is from 0 to infinity and exponential uh, minus of uh, n plus half um, beta h cross omega you wish let me write it with uh, and um, this is the total partition function and we can write it as z 1 to the power n. So, which means that this identical partition function for all the n oscillators okay? and uh, we just have to calculate one of them and then raise it to the power n. If we can calculate it uh, uh, in a closed form that is what will serve the purpose. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, equal to uh, nothing but a uh, uh, so if you write a few terms here let me write it here. So, for n equal to 0 it is exponential minus uh, beta h cross omega by 2 um, n equal to 1 is 3 by 2 uh, beta h cross omega uh, plus exponential minus 5 by 2 uh, beta h cross omega and so on. Okay. So, you see uh, this is like a G p series uh, geometric progression with the first term being uh, beta h cross omega by 2 and uh, this is 1 minus the common difference which is exponential beta h cross omega and uh, this is exactly what we would write is exponential minus beta h cross omega by 2 
and divided by 1 minus exponential minus beta h cross omega. Okay, now we can write both of them. Uh, okay, let me write this as e to the power minus just to have a you know uh, it looks nice uh, top and bottom. All right, so this is the partition function and we wanted to have it in a closed form which we have got now. Now, uh, let us write the free energy which is uh, per particle. So, f by n uh, that is equal to um, you know uh, this is minus 1 over uh, k t, um, this is a 1 over n uh, log of z. So, this gives you um, this is equal to half h cross omega, um, I mean uh, so, this is k t log z okay? uh, and this uh, we can just uh, divide it by n. So, we have this log of z and uh, anyway this is a z 1, uh, your z is equal to uh, exponential minus beta h cross omega by 2 uh, 1 minus exponential beta h cross omega whole to the power n and uh, you can do this calculate this uh, uh, thing which gives you a half h cross omega. Uh, so, what we do is that we take a log of z and then uh, there are the exponential there's and remember that log of uh, exponential x is equal to x okay? and we have here log of exponential minus beta h cross omega by 2 is equal to minus beta h cross omega by 2 and so on and then there is a log of 1 minus this. So, which can be uh, easily simplified and we get a k t log uh, 1 minus um, e to the power, uh, okay, let me write it as e to the power minus uh, this is h cross omega by k t. So, we write beta as 1 over k t just to have the temperature uh, dependence explicit in this expression. So, there is a free energy per particle and what would be the um, entropy after this? The entropy is again, uh, so entropy um, per particle, I mean per particle means per oscillator. Okay? So, this means oscillator just that we are more used to using uh, n to be number of particles, it is actually oscillators and uh, this is equal to s which is equal to a minus del f del t and uh, this is equal to uh, minus uh, k log of um, uh, 1 minus uh, exponential minus h cross omega by k t. Uh, these are simple derivations does not make sense for e to work out each and every step, but uh, for your benefit you should work uh, out each and every step because um, it is uh, also very easy to get lost in this uh, bit of algebra that you see here. So, it is h cross omega by k t and uh, this is uh, exponential minus h cross omega by k t divided by 1 minus h exponential minus h cross omega by k t. Okay? So, this is s as a function of t. So, this is the entropy as a function of t and specific heat Um, again per oscillator or per particle, this is let me write it with a small c, this is equal to t uh, del s del t and I um, will write down the result, but you should work it out. It is h cross omega by k t uh, whole square uh, exponential h cross omega by uh, k t. Um, exponential um, h cross omega by k t minus 1 square of that and that is the uh, specific heat um, and uh, one can actually um, calculate 
the limiting cases that is t going to um, infinity and t going to 0 are the two limiting case that is um, this is called as a classical limit and this is the quantum limit. Okay. Um, so, uh, what one gets is that uh, in the limit of uh, so, what you have is that you have the ratio of the two energy scales h cross omega and k t or uh, you have to compare between the two. So, h cross omega by k t to be much smaller than 1 this means that t equal to infinity limit and this is like classical and uh, for the other one it is h cross omega by k t to be much greater than 1 when the quantized uh, energy of the phonons or of the oscillators that dominates and hence it is a quantum limit. Okay. And um, uh, this uh, internal energy of the system can also be obtained. So, what you can do is that instead of uh, using uh, this uh, c equal to t del s del t, you can also calculate um, the internal energy which is um, minus 1 over n. So, uh, internal energy which we write as u um, energy. Now, this is of course, per oscillator or per particle. This u is equal to minus 1 of a, 1 by n del del beta of log z. So, you can directly get the internal energy and from there and this is nothing but equal to half h cross omega plus h cross omega by e to the power h cross omega by k t minus 1. Okay. So, in the limit of uh, large temperature when uh, h cross omega uh, large t is much much smaller than k t. Uh, so, what you get is uh, you can do this when um, h cross omega is much much smaller than k t you can write this as the, the second term as h cross omega and uh, this is like exponential x uh, you can write it as x 1 plus x. Uh, do not simply write it as 1 then you lose all information about x and it will give rise to a divergence here. So, this is equal to 1 plus h cross omega by k t um, and uh, this is uh, minus 1. So, 1 will cancel and we have a half h cross omega by k t plus a k t. Now, given that uh, this is much smaller compared to this. So, we can write this u to be equal to um, k t and uh, that will tell you the c is equal to uh, del u del t uh, which is uh, a constant. Okay. And this constant in uh, is coming out to be k because we have done it in one dimension, but if you do it in three dimension and put in this uh, capital N. So, that this the total specific heat would be uh, equal to uh, you know I mean uh, so there are there will be 3 n k t and this will give rise to 3 r. So, including um, dimension um, and number of particles. This is an expected result because this result tells you that uh, this uh, c equal to 3 r which is a constant is called as a Dulong and Petit law. Okay. And um, uh, at low temperature you have to do something else which is what we will uh, discuss later and uh, this result gives bad. Uh, so, in the sense that this approximation becomes bad which means that uh, Einstein had gone wrong somewhere which later Debye came and corrected it and he said that uh, not all the oscillators uh, they uh, vibrate about the mean position with the same frequency. So, there is a distribution of frequencies uh, with an important cutoff which is called as a Debye frequency and uh, once when he did all that that is uh, 
this is not a single omega that is coming in the picture, but there is a distribution of omega and uh, repeated the same calculation which is what we will do when we do quantum statistics. Uh, we will see that uh, the low temperature specific heat of solids or the contribution coming from phonons uh, is uh, T cube. Okay. So, this uh, called as a famous T cube law of device. So, it is a device T cube law of specific heat. So, let us do one more uh, example of uh, this canonical ensemble. Uh, it is a paramagnetic system of spin J. Okay. So, is it different than what we have done earlier? We have done a spin half. So, spin half done earlier. And um, so, what we do is that we write down the again the energy, energy is equal to minus uh, g, uh, we will just tell you what this g is and then maybe there is a mu 0 or mu b depending on what you write. Uh, you can write it as h or you can write it as b. So, uh, i equal to 1 to n. So, there are um, n uh, spins spin j and these are uh, written as say for example, um, we still write it as sigma i not meaning that they are Pauli matrices, but they just spins. So, each sigma i um, uh, takes values between between minus j uh, to plus j. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, problem that we have. So, we have to calculate this partition function which is nothing but this uh, summing over all possible values of sigma and uh, this is nothing but uh, exponential uh, beta uh, g um, mu 0 h sum over i uh, to n. See this i it was written as j in the last problem it just does not matter I mean just a dummy index to say that these are the particle indices or the spin indices or the oscillator indices and so on. Uh, g is called as a Landy g factor you can it is not important to consider it here, but once when we uh, talk about spin systems we uh, write this it is has a value um, on screen value is uh, equal to 2. So, this is the uh, partition function that we have to again uh, calculate in the closed form and this is slightly difficult than the one that we have done where spin half has only 2 uh, values which uh, we have to just add over 2 values, but now uh, there are 2 j plus 1 values. Okay. So, the sum has to be done over 2 j plus 1 and uh, this is like a, uh, so sigma 1 from minus j to plus j uh, through 0 basically you understand minus j uh, then this minus j plus 1 and then it is 0 1 2 and then all the way up to plus j. Okay. So, these are the uh, 2 j plus 1 values that you have to sum over okay. and um, this is uh, um, a little tricky, but not uh, much. So, it is mu 0 h uh, sigma 1 and then we have uh, another one for um, you know another bracket for um, sigma 2 equal to minus j to plus j exponential beta g mu 0 h sigma 2 and so on. Okay. So, uh, now in order to calculate this uh, you just have to uh, do it like this. Let me uh, just uh, write this as uh, exponential minus. So, each one of them will be identical. So, uh, we will have to calculate 1 and then raise it to the power n and let us see how we do that. So, what we do is that we write this as um, uh, this z as uh, exponential uh, each one. So, let us write it as z 1 and uh, we make this thing clear that this is like uh, z 1 to the power n 
where n uh, there are n spin uh, spins there. So, uh, n spin j objects. All right. So, this is uh, equal to minus uh, sigma y and then uh, this k is equal to. Um, uh, so, this can be written as uh, minus uh, j y uh, and then we have a k equal to 0 to 2 j and uh, e to the power y uh, by um, you know uh, whole to the power k where y is equal to beta j uh, mu 0 and whatever we used we have used uh, h. So, beta j mu 0 h which is equal to uh, j mu 0 h over k t. Okay. Uh, so, this is each one of the sum uh, and this is, uh, so this is one term and there are 2 j terms okay. and because it is inside the exponential. So, this makes it a 2 j plus 1 term and so this is equal to exponential minus j y, y given by that and this is equal to exponential 2 j plus 1 um, y minus 1 exponential um, y minus 1 and what you can do is that you can uh, do a symmetrization that is you can uh, divide this by j plus uh, half you can take this two common and then divide uh, numerator and denominator. So, that will give you just one step uh, here. So, this is equal to uh, uh, exponential 2 j um, uh, okay. So, uh, when you do that uh, you lose this uh, 2 j and then you write it in a symmetrized form it is j plus half y uh, minus exponential j plus half y. Um, so, there is a minus sign and then exponential y by 2 uh, minus exponential minus y by 2 and this finally gives us a closed form such as sin hyperbolic uh, j plus half uh, y and uh, sin hyperbolic y by 2. Okay. Now, uh, for j equal to half which is what we know Uh, this sin hyperbolic uh, y. So, if you put j equal to half, so half plus half equal to 1. So, it is a sin hyperbolic uh, y uh, divided by sin hyperbolic y by 2. Now, use this as uh, sin hyperbolic y is 2 sin hyperbolic y by 2 cos hyperbolic y by 2 uh, divided by sin hyperbolic y by 2 um, this is equal to 2 cosine hyperbolic y by 2. This is what we have gotten earlier. Uh, so, this uh, result is correct and uh, we get this uh, j 1 to be equal to or z 1 to be equal to this. Okay. And let us then uh, write down the entire uh, thing in our notation. So, the total z is equal to this sin hyperbolic um, beta mu 0 g there is a g there uh, as well. Um, I probably have forgotten a g here. So, there should be a g here and a g here. Okay. So, g mu 0 um, h into 2 j plus 1 um, by 2 uh, and then there is a sin hyperbolic uh, beta g mu 0 h by 2 and um, so this is the uh, the partition function that is uh, calculated in the closed form that is for the n particles and uh, what you can do is that you can calculate the magnetization and the magnetization is nothing but um, is um, m is equal to uh, 1 over beta um, del del h of log z 
uh, without uh, going through, I mean writing down explicitly the free energy, you can write this like this. And uh, this is nothing but n g mu 0 j and uh, we write a function which is called as a Brillouin function, it is a g mu 0 j h over k t. And uh, this b j function is called as a Brillouin function. And this is nothing but equal to a d d x of a log and then the sin hyperbolic a 2 j plus 1 by 2 j x um, divided by sin hyperbolic um, x over 2 j or 1 over 2 j into x. So, this is that function we are not going into details of this function, but um, uh, I mean when you calculate this, uh, uh, this function um, explicitly uh, then uh, this can be written as so uh, this b j of x is equal to 2 j plus 1 divided by 2 j cot hyperbolic uh, 2 j plus 1 divided by 2 j into x uh, minus 1 over 2 j uh, cot hyperbolic uh, x over 2 j, where x we have uh, taken it as um, in this case we have taken it as x or you can write it y also. It is like um, mu 0 uh, j h over k t. Okay we have taken that as y, you can write it as y as well, okay. it is the same thing. So, let us, um, now um, uh, you can do an expansion for this large t limit can be obtained uh, where you have mu 0 j h is less than k t which means k t is much larger than mu 0 j h. In that case, uh, your x is uh, much much smaller than 1 and a cot hyperbolic function with the x is like 1 plus um, um, x square by 2 uh, divided by. So, that is like uh, uh, this uh, uh, cot hyperbolic is 1 by tan hyperbolic which means that tan hyperbolic is sin by sin hyperbolic by cos hyperbolic. So, this is cos hyperbolic by sin hyperbolic. So, you keep these terms there and um, when you do a bit of simplification you have other terms also for small x uh, because we are trying to look at the uh, large temperature limit and this uh, thing uh, a little bit of algebra would tell you that it is equal to 1 plus uh, x square by 3. Okay? And, uh, the other higher terms will be there, okay? uh, but that is not important um, because we want to just consider this limit of uh, x to be small uh, and um, uh, then if you uh, put this uh, into this uh, the Brillouin function and calculate the magnetization, the magnetization comes out to be you know some n into j. Uh, into j plus 1 into g uh, mu 0 square h over 3 k t. Okay. And uh, this is a nice and close result for this at at least at large temperatures and that tells you the susceptibility uh, which is a measurable quantity in magnetic system. Uh, this uh, can be written as uh, del m del h. Okay. And this is equal to um, n j into j plus 1, it is a linear in h, so it is doing a derivative is very easy. So, this is mu 0 square divided by 3 k t and you see again we land up with a result where a chi is a function uh, is, is 1 over uh, temperature and this is called as a Curie's law. All right. So, this is uh, 
something that we wanted to do. We have done a number of examples. We have done a classical ideal gas. We have done a spin half system. We have done a spin J system. We have done um, uh, oscillators, which is a model for solids. And uh, uh, this is pretty much, you know, uh, in uh, normal uh, sort of uh, course on statistical mechanics, these things are covered and one uh, learns how to calculate the partition function in a closed form and hence use it uh, to obtain uh, physical quantities uh, like for example here magnetization or the susceptibility or uh, uh, deriving the equation of state for a gas or uh, using you know uh, the specific heat uh, for a solid which is which is a known problem so on and um, uh, the last uh, thing that we do here is the equipartition theorem uh, we have told the result of equipartition theorem, but let me uh, just uh, do a quick derivation of that. It is not uh, difficult, but it is an important uh, equipartition theorem. And as the name suggests, uh, so this um, e the energy uh, at a temperature T is equally partitioned to all the harmonic degrees of freedom. That is not clear from the name, but it, it, it means that, that uh, at an equilibrium temperature T, uh, each harmonic degree of freedom will have an energy half k T in one dimension um, and uh, so per degree of freedom. So, the two degrees of freedom say P square and X square, you will have half k T and half k T uh, in one dimension. So, that will give you a k T in three dimension, it will give you a three k T. Okay. So, uh, we simply uh, you know again do it for free particles. So, this um, E is equal to um, H P square P I square by 2 m. So, that is a sum over I and uh, then uh, we calculate the average energy. And uh, the average energy can be obtained as say epsilon i. Uh, so, this is uh, what we write it as sum over i epsilon i and um, uh, this is equal to. So, we will have to uh, weight this energy by the Boltzmann factor and divide it by this uh, something like the partition function. So, that is a minus infinity to plus infinity uh, exponential minus beta e. Uh, so, all these uh, coordinates q 1 to q n, uh, p 1 to p n and then this epsilon i and then all these d cube q 1, uh, d cube q n um, and uh, d cube p 1 to d cube p n and so on and then we have to just simply divide it by exponential minus beta e um, and this d cube uh, well uh, this integral minus infinity to plus infinity for each one of them it is actually a, a 6 n dimensional integral even though we have written as 1 here. So, it is d cube uh, uh, q 1 to d cube q n um, and d cube p 1 to d cube p n. Okay. So, that is the uh, quantity that we have to calculate average energy at a temperature T and um, so what we do is that uh, we sort of separate out uh, these um, energy the total energy to be equal to uh, which is a function of course of uh, uh, all these q 1 to q n and p 1 to p n uh, and uh, this is equal to uh, epsilon i p i uh, plus uh, e prime. Uh, so, we have separated out all uh, energies excepting the uh, you know the component that we want to calculate the average for and writing uh, everything else as e prime. So, uh, we will have this e prime as uh, or rather this uh, epsilon uh, i uh, average uh, we have used this form of average or we can write it as uh, up to you, you choose your notation. Okay. So, this is equal to 
um, so minus infinity to plus infinity exponential minus beta epsilon i plus e prime writing down the total energy and then there is a epsilon i and there is a d p i. Now, why I write only d p i because uh, this only e i depends upon p i and uh, then of course, you have uh, d cube q 1 all the way up to d cube q n um, uh, and, and then d cube p 1 to d cube p n, but now remember that 1 is missing. So, d q p i is missing because I have already written that is missing from this because we want to calculate uh, for a, a given particle uh, which are labeled by this indices uh, uh, the average energy of that particle and this is minus infinity to plus infinity it is exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, uh, now you have a d q q i 1 to n and d q p 1 to d q p n. Okay. We just have uh, because there is no uh, distinction between any of them, but what we can do is that we can write this down as a minus infinity to plus infinity exponential minus beta epsilon i epsilon i d p i and exponential minus beta e prime um, and d cube q 1 to d cube p n understanding all the things are there and we write it with a prime summation because this prime summation does not include a p i integral which is separated out and similarly we write this down as well uh, epsilon i d p i and an integral which is exponential minus beta e prime uh, d cube q 1 to d cube p n. Now, you see that these two integrals would cancel each other because uh, it is all um, uh, everything is common there in the numerator and the denominator and you are only left with this part which is uh, nothing but uh, you can get an epsilon i out by taking a minus del del beta of uh, this minus infinity to plus infinity exponential minus beta i d p i and divided by these exponential. So, again from minus infinity to plus infinity and we have this uh, exponential minus epsilon i d p i and this is equal to minus del del beta uh, of uh, log of uh, minus infinity to infinity exponential minus beta epsilon i uh, d p i and uh, so I, I converted this into a minus del del beta of log of this because if you take a, a del del beta of log of this you will get this term uh, that is in the denominator and you also would get this uh, term in the numerator. All right. So, we are almost done. So, this epsilon i average which is per particle the average energy per particle is um, uh, nothing but equal to. Uh, so, we can calculate it uh, equal to 1 by root beta uh, minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power um, you know y square uh, by 2 m dy. Uh, where y we have taken it as uh, p i um, into root beta. Okay. So, that uh, this is the average energy per particle at a given temperature t and this root beta has come out we have just written it a little um, you know um, sort of familiar fashion. So, that uh, we can apply this uh, Gaussian integral directly. Okay. So, uh, this uh, tells you that uh, log of this minus uh, infinity to plus infinity. So, we have just uh, you know done some uh, sort of uh, simplification here, but it may not be so much required because uh, is exponential minus d p uh, beta i d p i this is equal to minus half of log beta and plus some log of this quantity which is we do not really need because. Uh, this is like uh, it is independent of the temperature okay? this part which we have written there. Uh, so, this is equal to 
uh, I mean uh, this is really equal to that uh, uh, minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus beta p i square over 2 m that part ok. So, which is this part which is the second term here. Um, so, uh, we have nearly solved the problem. So, epsilon i is equal to minus del del beta writing it once again. Uh, so, this is equal to uh, del del beta of minus half log of beta which is equal to 1 over 2 beta which is equal to 1 over 2 k t ok. So, this is an important result that average energy per particle is this uh, for n particles in three dimension epsilon i is equal to uh, 3 n by 2 k t ok. So, this is the average energy power particle. Now, uh, I have also said that it says that uh, uh, per harmonic degree of freedom. So, for harmonic oscillators we can simply um, add another contribution because of that x square degrees of freedom. So, this becomes equal to uh, which we call as the internal energy is equal to 3 n k t ok or 3 r t and this is precisely the reason that the specific heat of solids comes out as uh, uh, 3 r which is called as a Dulong and Petit law. This is an important uh, result in, um, in statistical mechanics or thermodynamics and should be uh, kept in mind that this is a classical result because we are talking about a a temperature at a at a given temperature t and and you see that all the results that we recover are those at uh, large temperature that is when the thermal uh, energy dominates in the system so um, we will uh, see one more theorem in the next class uh, called as the virial theorem we'll stop here today thank you mm -hmm.